this will be an update. Um, I apologise recently I've had crap videos. Um, basically, the computer's failed. Um, what is that? The van has had a few issues. And the <laughs> there's an earth issue on the electrics in this house, which basically messed up my microphone. Um, so I've got a mixing desk and everything because it's USB um, is relying on the computer and I think the computer has got an issue with the electricity as well which is why it all went pear shaped. Um, but the problem is it all went at once. I mean I know somebody mentioned about the frosting on the camera as well which was a little bit strange. Um, I still get a look at that, it's just been one of those things I put to one side. Um, the main thing here is things go wrong for people all the time. It's how you deal with it is the important bit. Um, so I've had a few negative weeks. I've obviously been trolled a fair bit as well. Um, the thing with the trolls is that people ask me, why don't you react more to it? It's because I look at them and I think, <laughs> you know, you got a guy who does car valeting for a living. You've got somebody who sells Scientology. You've got a retired old guy in France. Um, I just look and go, they, what, A, why are they complaining? But B, they've got nothing to complain about. You know, they've got, it's like someone who's mentioned, oh, maps in the cleaning business, and I brought it up before. I've got no issue with cleaning, I'll be honest with you. There's good money in cleaning, but I don't work in cleaning. I work in for, uh, I work in hard services, not soft services. They're different. I work in air conditioning and all that sort of stuff, the big stuff, um, generators, power plants, all that sort of thing. I don't clean. I don't clean for living, but I don't mock people that do um, because it's an interesting job. You know, at the end of the day, it's... It's like most things, there's better money in doing crap jobs anyway. Um, I learned years ago, when I was talking to people in an office, they're earning like 20, 24,000 a year maximum. And they look down on you because you're there with a work shirt on and you know, getting covered in crap, climbing up, finding what's wrong with the electrics and stuff. They're like, oh, look at that twat, you know. Yes, that twat's got a degree that twats are in 76,000 a year because of the overtime and other bits and pieces, um, as well as the basic rate being more than you get paid. But it's how you look at things. And that's what I said, I couldn't be bothered. I, you know, when I look at a guy who washes cars, um, Scientology crazy guy, um, that's a conspiracy theory for everything, I was just like, I don't even know what I'm arguing about. Um, what I mean is I can't really argue with people, I can't see what they're arguing about, but also they need to do more with their lives in the first place. Um, let's leave it there. It's like some of the, you know, like, oh, Matt's broke. Um, there's 5,000 euros sat on my table. Uh, but this is the thing, they try to get you into these little games. You're actually watching me on my new 27-inch uh, iMac, top of the range K5, F5K uh, iMac that I got because the computer failed and blah blah blah. I simply just went and got, well, I just buy one. And did I get it on credit? No, I don't need credit. I paid cash. Um, but the thing is, this is the little games because then it's like, well, Matt thinks he's better because he's doing it. It's like that's what trolling's about, you see. That's why I generally don't get into this stuff at all, because there is no positive upside to it. Because it's all about creating the next argument over nothing. But they don't like you looking at their lives. Um, Scott Ingram, for example, was on about having an internet calf, and I was talking to Jay about this earlier. Uh, Jay from Real Deal, because we, we chat on a daily basis normally. Um, I said, but Scott doesn't have the money for an internet calf. But he's only admittance he's only got enough money for six months. If you have an internet calf, uh, ask somebody that's done it how much it costs. 
because I estimate it costs about a quarter of a million euro, uh, euros, <laughs> pesos. Um, I've got 45 PCs with new monitors, blah, blah, blah. Um, they're not gaming machines, they're working machines. Um, but they're good machines, cost me yeah, about 15,000 15, each. I've got 45 of them. Just in my computers alone, um, I've got over 650,000 pesos of equipment. I've got cubicles for them. I've got all the desks, the table, the tables, um, the refurbishing of the building, etc. For the call center side, I know how much it costs me. And Scott's saying, "Well, I've got enough money for six months, uh, but Duterte stopped me opening the call center." I would say, "You didn't have enough money for a call center." It's differently. We said, "Oh, we're going to have a couple of pesos peso machines, and we're going to have two computers in the little eatery." That's a different thing. But this is the thing, they're playing up things, and then if you actually sit there and go, yeah, but your figures don't add up, they don't like it. Yeah, who cares? You know, that's the old thing, it's not about egos. I, I don't do this for egos, I don't care. Um, as you can see here, I didn't over tidy the house up. What you see behind me, you'll see there's two, two things here that you might find interesting. The first one is, Zoe's taken over my teaching English board, but it's also a good idea um, because instead of having reams and reams of paper with kids like drawing, with that she just does another drawing whenever she wants. So she'll she'll do like one or two drawings a day, but she's got the full thing. So she sit there for an hour or whatever doing her drawings, and then. She can scrub it off if she wants or leave it there until she decides she wants to do something else. The other board up here, um, it's all the stuff that we need to do, appointments and all that sort of stuff. We keep it all together um, because it doesn't matter who's coming in the sitting room or whatever, they can sit there and go, like, Ubi could come in and go, oh, I've got PE for school this week or whatever or today or whatever they can see on the board keeps the kids organized because they look as well and they get some of the habit of looking so they don't forget things there is another notes board on the kitchen which is just here you just our eye shot um, that's got all the big events for the school um, we try to get the kids involved in all that stuff so that they actually know what they're doing because I think a lot of people don't get their kids involved at an early age and then when they're a bit older they're not used to being organized but our kids they'll go oh how many days to my birthday and I'll go and check the calendar in the kitchen um, because they're into that way of thinking they know what to do where to get it from etc so what else is my updates well you know the car's got to go the van's got to go in for its repair um, the odd thing is, I've stripped the whole thing down and rebuilt. The, it's got a, the alternators all done now. I put it on myself. Um, new fan belts for the power steering, the water pump, and the alternator, as well as the dry belt. Done it myself. Um, that's pretty much all done. Uh, the battery was a bit flat, so I've got that charging around the corner here at the minute because that's going back on tomorrow. And then I'm going to check the alternator, put a, a, a little check. If you're doing, um, if you're putting an alternator on the vehicle, check the voltage before you put it on, and then do a load test when you start the alternator up, when you start the engine, because you should see the load go up, the voltage go up on the engine, um, which means it's drawing. Um, so, so, I struggle to explain things in layman's terms sometimes. But if, if you imagine you've just got the battery, the battery has, say, 12.4 volts or 13 volts or something like that. When you put the alternator on, which actually charges the battery, it'll go up to 13.4, 13.6, or 12.6. Well, you'll see it go up, not down. That's where you take the first one, it goes 12.4. And then when you put the engine on, it goes 13. You know, it's charging the battery. Simple as that. Um, but just thought I'd throw that in there as a bit of information. But the van's pretty much sorted now. It's going to go in um, because we're going to do a full um, investigation on the vehicle. 
because I want to see if I've got ball joints any doing, get it get it listed, costed, etc. Bumpers want replacing, get the price on it, see what we need to do. Check the gearbox, check the transmission, check check everything, and then just go okay. Well, because because before we bought it, it had some really bad mechanics on it. Um, I think me using the word mechanic would be unfair on those that are actually qualified and skilled mechanics. Um, I think the people who worked on it before used to tie up horses and wear cowboy hats. Um, but the the point being is get it done, get it overhauled, because I want to get it ready for the winter because we're going to head up to the, the mountains over the Christmas period so the kids can see snow for the first time. Um, we're going to do that this year. Now this is the thing about ups and downs. The downside, I've had the, the van off the road for nearly two weeks now um, because I was waiting for an alternator to come and then I've had the tools arrive to fix the belts and stuff today when I done it yesterday and the day before because I got fed up of waiting, which is typical. Um, so no vehicle for two weeks. Uh, had the computer fail, <laughs> had the microphone's not working, had the uh, camera steaming up so I couldn't use the laptop. The computer wouldn't even process the videos even though I do it on other equipment, that's why all the intros have gone. Um, it died. <laughs> it was um, on its, you know, the, the old beeping noise as it's coming into crash. It was just basically falling apart. Um, but on the upside, it did keep me working. I still, you know, <laughs> I had to take out three, three of the hard drives, the graphics cards, the memory, just to get it switch on. Um, I know someone's going to say, yeah, but it's probably a full power supply. It's the third one it's had um, since we've been there in two years, which is a bit excessive. It might still be the power supply, but we'll wait and see. I'll do that later. Um, right now, it can be pushed to one side because I've got more important stuff going on. So all the negative stuff happens in one lump. We have bang, bang, bang. Then the positive stuff. Today is sangria. The reason I'm having sangria, my 27 inch IMAX turn up, replacing the faulty computer. The alternator is on, everything's set up. I bought a battery charger now as well, so I've got a battery charger and I can also charge off the solar system. So that's, that's that solved, so the van's going to be sorted. Got a good mechanic um, who's also a Volkswagen fanatic, so he come round for free to actually just have a look at the engine and stuff and go, oh yeah, I know what that is, da da da. And he was looking at different things on there because uh, you could see some bits were missing. Um, but I suspected there were some issues. That's the thing, I don't expect to buy a second hand vehicle and go, it's going to be fine, everything's going to work for the next five, ten years until we buy a new one. A new one. Um, but he's in the same mindset as me. He sold his van of the same age for seven and a half thousand euros uh, once he refitted it. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to refit it, but I'm not going to sell it. I'm not going to sell it short term. But long term, you've got to look at the fact that I'll get the money back on it over time. So even if we invest it now, I've actually lost no money whatsoever. It's also given me um, a year of transportation. A bit, you know, when my daughter and my father were here. We had a good run around, you know, we didn't um, have any transportation issues. It sort of died after they got to the airport, <laughs> which is, but then you go, oh, that's the positive thing. You know, it waited until they had been on their holiday. No, that, for me, that's, that's the important bit. Didn't ruin the holiday. But then, what happened on the positive side? Well, the vehicle's already on it, getting sorted. New computer, okay, it's cost me 2,000 euros, but it's a nice computer. I, I've got to admit, this is my first Mac, and tonight I set up with um, the T. This was in the sitting room. I set up the TV, I thought I'd get a movie on the old USB stick. I'll sit there, put a pillow, so if I, if I fall asleep, it doesn't really matter. But I'll switch, switch the Mac on, lay on there, and let it update. And it didn't need it because it's not Windows. 
which was funny. Which is funny because the other one, update, reset, update, reset, you know, because you know what Windows is like. Um, that's Windows 7. I don't know if 10's as bad because I don't like Windows 10 at all. I hate it. It does so much crap. Um, I can't use it for work, let's put it that way. The photo things it has is slow. Um, I can't because I need to view photos quite quickly. I'm sort of flicking like that. Uh, for example, say I'm looking for a generator and somebody's giving me the wrong barcode. I flick through about 100 photos, just going, that's it, and, and grab it. I can't do that with Windows 10. It just sort of does that. That's what pace, which to get five spreadsheets done in a day, it ain't going to happen. Um, so there's that side. We, you know, got a new computer. The video quality is fantastic because it's 5K. I'm hoping the cameras are good. I'm hoping the audio is good. Um, but so far, wow, I'm loving my Mac. I'm loving it. Um, now, as regards the negative stuff other people put there, don't worry about it. You know, if people start doing this crap with you, don't worry about it. Just brush them off. They don't matter. They don't matter. I don't do this for money. I'll tell you that now. I don't do it for money. Um, when I say I actually send money to the Philippines, I do send it to the Philippines. Um, but people assume that everything's about money. I don't need to be doing this. Wait, look at it the other way. These channels don't bring in mega money. What? I would say even Rike makes more money than I do, without a doubt. And I'll tell you now, what Rike makes in a month, I'm making a day working. So the whole point is for me, it's not for that. It's for sharing information and advice. It's just for having life experiences to share with other people. It's showing that you don't have to have the life that people often sell you. Um, I don't think some people get it though. That's, I mean, I was talking to Jay today about this. I don't think some people really understand why people do this. Everything's about money, you know. I'll get it. I come from a military family. I brought this up before. I remember my first experience of coming to the UK because um, we moved to the UK in 1989. In the armed forces, we do things for free. You know, if you needed help, I'll come and sort it for you. And it's like, don't worry about it. Because the whole point is, when you're down, we don't kick you. We pick you up. Um, it's, <laughs> in Spain, I find a lot of people quite happily rob you. <laughs> but anyway, we're sorting that out at the moment. That's another thing we're working on. Um, getting rid of that. But the whole point is, it's not about profit. It was, you know, coming from a military background, we look after each other. That's, that's just the done deal. My first experience in the UK was seeing a friend of mine rip his brother off for a computer component that was worth nothing. Because um, not only was it worth nothing, but he'd actually got it for free because he took the upgrade out of somebody else's machine because he'd actually been asked to repair the machine. He then stole the computer memory um, and downgraded it because obviously the person that gave it to him to fix didn't know how much memory was in the computer, didn't know much about computers, so they trusted him and they shouldn't have done. So he then upgraded his memory in his computer and then sold his brother the, the other memory at an inflated price, the, the stuff he took out. And I'm thinking, I don't normally work like this. I, morally, I couldn't do it. Morally, I couldn't do it. Um, yeah, I, I can't do it. I'm too honest for that rubbish. Uh, I'm more happy helping people. And they, this is the joke with some of the trolling stuff. Because even with Jeff, Jeff the day before with the issues, well, a couple of days before, I think, the issues with Jay was having with the pizza restaurant, um, Jeff had told Jay to get in touch with me to see if I could help. Now, the thing is, this gets onto something else, which is about being the expert. Um, see, 
if you ask me what my, I, my expert thing is about, it's actually network. When Jay had this issue, I didn't say, right, I'm going to sort it out, I'll do it, don't you worry. It's a case of, the first thing I said is, I'm, I don't work from Davao. I don't know people in Davao. I know people from Cebu. Uh, if it was Cebu, I could do a lot more. But I know people that can help in Davao. Um, and that's it. I use people that have more experience and knowledge than me. I don't sit there and go, I'm, I know everything and blah, blah, blah. I utilize people that have those skills. It, it's how you work in business. You, you don't have the answers to everything. But if you understand how uh, directors work in a business, they try to disconnect themselves from the day-to-day -day stuff. And you can only do that by delegation. Um, that is how businesses function. You know, the people at the top should be dealing with other issues, you know, trying to develop the business and um, all that sort of stuff. They shouldn't be going down to the pit face of the work and sitting there with the guys that are doing all the cogs in the wheel stuff. Um, and it's not out of arrogance, by the way. It's because of the size of the business. The, if they spend all their time down there, bigger problems appear somewhere else. Um, but that's what I'm saying. You delegate. Good management is about managing. You delegate all the uh, work to other people, especially if they're a lot more experienced and knowledgeable in those areas than you are. Uh, for example, the film. Because I'm the invented about. I, I've always got relatives there, but I haven't been myself. So, yeah. But, yeah, going forward, looks like our equipment's looking a lot better. Uh, the picture's sharper. One thing I will say, the screen seems pretty huge. Um, camera wise, the camera seems to be very wide, very wide angle. Um, but, looking forward to kickstarting stuff very soon. Uh, one thing I will be getting is more sleep because obviously I'm doing a full day and sorting them. Oh, that's the final good news. Uh, my contract's been extended work-wise till at least January, which means good money for the rest of the year. Um, which also meant I approached the bank about getting a house here. All things looking good. Would I advise you to get a house here? I would advise you not to get a new development house here unless you know you can market it for rentals. Um, the reason being, older places are a lot cheaper. The houses over there, a studio apartment, a studio apartment um, to my right side, is, they said front of beach, but they've actually built a new development and start, it started to come up in front of it. So you'd have spent a small fortune getting this beautiful view of the beach to now have another construction development in front of you, which is a bit annoying for me because the guy that was actually doing it told me there was no other developments going to be going ahead of him, and they have. Um, but the thing is, for the price of a studio apartment there, going that way away from the beach by about an extra minute walking, um, I can get a three bedroom house with a roof deck and a basement office. Not bad. <laughs> Thanks for watching.